year at this time, I think back to one of the highlights of my summer as a youth, the week spent each June at Grandma and Nieces in the eastern suburbs of Pittsburgh. Softball, swimming, the ice cream truck each evening, these were staples of that vacation, except for one year, 1972, when summer at Grandma's was disrupted by a storm named Agnes. In late June, the main weather worries in Pennsylvania tend to be increasing heat and humidity and the occasional severe thunderstorm, with the tropics low on the list. But in 1972, the first storm of the season, Agnes, developed on June 16th, just east of the Yucatan Peninsula, headed north and became a hurricane two days later in the southern Gulf. Agnes came ashore on the Florida Panhandle late on the 19th and quickly weakened over Georgia. It headed northeast and re-strengthened into a tropical storm as it emerged into the Atlantic on June 21st. But instead of moving out to sea, Agnes was pulled back to the northwest by the circulation of a mid-latitude storm approaching from the west. And as the two combined, they slowed to a crawl across southern New York and northern Pennsylvania, setting the stage for historic flooding. Most of the Commonwealth got more than half a foot of rain from June 20th to the 24th. Only the extreme west and parts of the northeast and southeast escaped with less. The heaviest rain, more than 10 inches, was focused right on the Susquehanna River Basin, stretching from Lycoming County southward to the Maryland border. Some of the highest amounts were nearly 13 inches in Williamsport, more than 15 and a half in York, and 18 inches plus at a USDA research site in western Schuylkill County. The impact on the rivers in eastern Pennsylvania was devastating. Record crests that still stand today were set on the west branch of the Susquehanna at Jersey Shore, Williamsport, Milton, and Lewisburg, and along the main stem from Tawanda in the north all the way to Marietta in the south. In Wilkesbury, the river crested 19 feet above flood stage, topping the levees by four feet and inundating parts of the Wyoming Valley. In Luzerne County, more than 25,000 homes and businesses were damaged or destroyed as 14 miles of streets were flooded. In Harrisburg, the Susquehanna exceeded flood stage by more than 15 feet. Water poured into the first floor of the governor's mansion, forcing Governor Schapp to evacuate by boat. Record high river levels also occurred along the entire length of the Schuylkill River, from northern Berks County to the confluence with the Delaware River. At Pottstown, where flood stage is 13 feet, the river rose to an incredible 30 feet. A relatively light four to five inches of rain fell in Philadelphia, but the deluge upstream eventually reached the city via the Schuylkill, sending feet of water into Boathouse Row and flooding low-lying areas near the river. To this day, Agnes ranks as the costliest natural disaster in Pennsylvania history, with economic losses estimated at $2.8 billion. With 48 fatalities attributed to the storm in the state, it's no wonder that it was dubbed Hurricane Agony by Governor Schapp. Fred Godomsky is back with the extended forecast next.